Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for July, where we'll look at updates from the past month. And we have some very interesting releases to cover today, so let's dig in right away. If you've used Cloud Functions in the past, you've probably noticed that it creates temporary files for its container images in your project's cloud storage buckets. Well, these then show up in your usage graph and typically also as small charges on your project bill each month. Since its 9.14 release, the Firebase CLI now cleans up these temporary files at the end of each deployment that you run. This means that you should no longer see these files, and maybe more importantly, you should no longer see new charges to your project once you upgrade. To get this and many more improvements, upgrade to the latest version of the Firebase CLI with the link that I provided below. By using Firestore's data bundles, you can seed the local cache of your application right when the app first runs, even when it's offline. Data bundles also allow you to reduce the number of documents that each device reads from the server by providing data as bundled updates. Well, since version 8.1 of our SDKs for C++ and Unity, you can load data from bundles into your Firestore's local cache of your game, so that it will be used by calls on that client. You can also get results for named queries through the new Get Named Query Async method. To learn more about Firestore data bundles and how to load them into your games, check the links that I provided below. Firestore App Check reduces abuse of your Firebase real-time database, cloud storage, and cloud functions by ensuring that only calls that come from your own app are allowed. But did you know that you can also use App Check to protect your own backend services? Well, to do so, you will need to modify your app client to send an App Check token along with each request to your backend. And then you modify your backend code to validate that App Check token. We've just added new methods to our primary SDKs to get the app check token and to monitor when this token changes. To learn how to implement app check to protect your own backend resources, read the documentation that are linked below. And speaking of app check, fast following the announcement at Apple's WWDC event, Firebase now also supports app attest for iOS apps. App attest verifies that a request comes from a legitimate instance of your app by satisfying these three requirements. The request must come from a genuine Apple device, and it must be running your genuine application, and the payload must not have been tampered with. App attest can be used for app check on iOS in addition to device check, which we already supported, and which you might still want to use to support older iOS versions. So see the documentation below to find out what best meets your needs and how to implement it. Writing security rules is hard, but the earlier you start, the easier it is. In the latest emulator suite, you can get started on your rules easier than ever right from the moment you write your first line of code. The Firestore Emulator UI now has a new Request tab that shows you all the requests that your apps make to the local Firestore Emulator in real time. From this user interface, you can then drill down to the details of each request, such as the method, the path, and of course, the security rules evaluation. This makes it much easier to see how your security rules are affecting your app's behavior and to keep the code and the rules aligned during development. So upgrade to the latest version of the Firebase tools with the link I provided below and look for an upcoming blog post that explains even more of what you can do with this powerful new feature. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked them, give this video a like or subscribe to the channel below. My name is Frank Orpuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.